there's, there's, there's always time. You can always be there. But that's not the way God looks at it. Just as every human person is important to God, and God doesn't say, well, I got a lot of people. Whatever happens to some, let it go. He's got a lot of people, but every individual person is important to God. You are unique. No one was ever like you. No one is like you today. And no one will ever be like you. In God's timetable, no two days are the same. Every day, God has a specific and definite plan to do something to your life that's positive. That can help you become the man or woman that God designed you to be. He programmed your life. And the only way you let that programming of God become not only effectual, but influential to other people, is by giving yourself wholly to God's plan for your life. By presenting yourself to the influence of the word of God. It's important. Hallelujah. You know, one amazing thing about human beings is that a lot of them, almost all their life, never come to terms with what is really important. Most of them live a whole life without ever knowing why they came. A lot of people live a whole life without ever knowing why they were born. Doing everything else except that thing for which God brought them to this world. What a waste of life. What a waste of life. You know, it's one thing to say, this is what I want to do with my life. But have you ever found out what God wants to do with your life? Did you ever stop to think that you needed to know from him? The reason you were born? Except, of course, if you think your parents were the one who brought you to this world. But they're not. They didn't plan for you. They wanted to have a child, not you. <laughs> they didn't know you were coming. And then you came. And for some time they were glad. Until they discovered who you were. Hallelujah. Well, thanks be unto God. The only one who really knows you. The only one who really has a plan for your life. Don't you think it's wiser to deal directly with him about your life? Don't live an empty life. For many do. Don't live an empty life. It's too short for you to mess it up. Remember, there were people who lived up to 900 years and more. But those 900 years have long ended and they're gone. How long do you want God to give to you? You want 300 years? Some lived longer than that one time and the 300 years came to a close. How long do you want? So life is not rich by reason of its length. It's rich by reason of its accomplishment in God. Now I want you to notice that. Life's accomplishment in God. There's a great difference between what God sees your life to be and what men see your life to be. You know, many times when they're burying somebody, they make an oration and then they tell everybody how good that man was and how kind he was and all what he achieved. Well, the question is, 
did he do those things for Jesus? Because it's only the ones he did for Jesus that will last. Hey, come on here. There's only one person that really counts. His name is Jesus. The Bible says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Jesus. He didn't say we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. I want you to notice the difference. So anybody could say, well, depending whatever religion, uh, one day you're going to give account. No, the Bible says everybody will give an account to Jesus. Not to whatever God you serve. To Jesus. And then the Bible says, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. No other name except Jesus. Make no mistakes about it. Only Jesus is a name for salvation. So, if you're here, you can decide you want to worship through Buddha or through Muhammad or Krishna or Confucius. Yeah, Confucius was confused. Or you can decide you want to worship God through some of the uh, uh, other names your grand, great grandfather worshipped. A man was given a certain experience. He was not a Christian. He didn't believe in Jesus. But his mother believed in Jesus and had been praying for him. And then something happened to him and he died. And arrived the gates of hell. When he got to hell, he said, where am I? A voice spoke and said, you are in hell. He said, I don't believe in hell. The voice said, yes, many here don't be didn't believe in hell. He said, many here didn't believe in hell. It doesn't matter that you believe or you don't believe. Come on, talk to me. Hey, somebody told you you are in Nigeria right now. How do you know? Because they told you. What is Nigeria? Talk to me now. Do you feel? Is there a feeling? Is there a Nigerian feeling when you come into Nigeria? You hear? Because that, that's what they told you. Some of you even believe in your father or your mother, that they are your dad and mom. Because they told you. That guy you call your brother, the son of your mother, you met him in the house. <laughs> Somebody told you. You were not there. Were you there when you were born? They said this woman's your mother. You see, you've always known how to be your mother. Does that make her your mother? But I look like her. It's got nothing to do with it. You would look like somebody you grew up with. Never forget it. Any face... <laughs> you better be careful in your life. Any face you see constantly while you're growing up is what you're going to look like. Mm. Boy, I'm telling you. Those of you young parents who like leaving your little children with house girl and house boy, guess what? That's what they're going to resemble. You better, you better be careful. You know, some of them women, um, they, they had a, a child. Daddy always left home early in the morning, came back late at night. And then only the landlord who was always coming to say hello to the woman and uh, the children. And then later on they said the woman gave birth and, and the child resembled landlord. <laughs> the landlord didn't have anything to do with the woman and the child. He was just visiting. And children resemble who they see. You better be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a fact of life. Even married people, after many years of being together, they start looking alike. Hmm. 
Sometimes good, sometimes bad, depending on what, what the other one looked like. Everyone is responsible for his face. After the age of five, you're responsible for your face. You can't blame your mother or your father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody said, I don't like my wide nose. Where did you get it from? Say, it's my parents. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was all that time you were doing like this. <laughs> Always putting your... Ah. That's what broadened it. Now you're trying to bring it together. It's too late. <laughs> Praise God. If you have not subscribed to Part TV, please kindly subscribe, turn on the alarm bell, comment, so that whenever we post a new video, you'll be the first to be notified, so that you don't miss out on any of our content, because we're going to bring you guys a lot of things, so please subscribe. I beg you to subscribe, so please kindly subscribe to our channel. See you guys next time. Bye.